All right, great knights. We are going to do a little bit of measurement, marking, and hand cutting. Okay, so what we're going to do first off is to show you how to use a tape measure. I'm sure maybe use it before. If I bring this up close to you, there's your tape measure. If you open it up, okay, I'll hold it this way so it's actually the right direction. We are working in this classroom in the top scale here, which is in inches. This measurement itself right now, this measuring tape is in what they call a sixteenth of an inch rule, which means from two to three, there are 16 small incremental lines. Okay, that means that from this line to this little tiny guy right here is one sixteenth of an inch. Okay, so we're no longer in a metric system, we're now in the imperial system. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the blade here up to the edge of my piece of wood and I'm going to mark it off at one, two, three inches. And then I'm going to use a square and draw a straight line. Okay, we're keeping it in normal numbers, we're not going to go anything in the halves or quarters right now, just simple measurement. Okay. These are used for rough measurement only. You don't want to use a tape measure for doing specific measurements and this and fine because of this. You'll see how the blade moves back and forth like that. That will throw off all your measurements pending. Okay, so we always use this for rough cutting and rough measuring. Okay, so to measure it, I'm going to go here, pull across like that. I can lock my tape in, put it further back, it's more stable. Take my pencil, always mark in pencil, never mark in pen or marker because it will actually bleed into the wood grain later on and it's horrible to try and get it out. So one, two, three, I'm going to make one mark right there. What I always like to do is to put an X on that side of the wood. Okay, we'll close this up again. Okay. What that X tells me is when I'm making my cut, I don't want to cut on this side because if this is what I need and I cut on this side of the line, now I'm short. If I cut on the line and don't go straight, which is a common thing using a handsaw, some of my grade nines last time cut from here to about here and that was their straight line. It was rough. But you cut on the outside edge, the X, that is where you're cutting so you're keeping what you need. You cut off on the outside of the line. Okay. We'll also take a square like that. It's called the carpenter square. What the carpenter square lets me do is I pull it up against the edge like this. I put my pencil on the line. I slide up to it like that, and I draw. This is the line right here that I want to be cutting. Do I want to cut on the line? In most cases, I would say cut to the outside edge. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to start cutting. I'm going to secure it into a vise like so. If you don't have a vise, then what you normally have is you have a buddy to help you hang on to it. Okay, in class, we would be cutting off these tables and we would be cutting with a handsaw to begin with. Okay, here's our handsaw. This is a cross cut saw, so it's meant for cross cutting, which means cutting across the grain. You can tell that because there's so many little tiny teeth and the teeth are going one way and out, back and forth opposites. This is for cross cutting. A rip saw would have bigger teeth and it would be for cutting straight, which means ripping with the wood grain this way. Instead, we're cross cutting this way. Okay, when I put my saw down, I want to grip it like I'm going to shake hands. So I'm shaking hands with the saw like this. Okay, you don't have to grip onto it like you're going to kill it. Okay, see my knuckles are white. This is not good flexed arms. Okay, nice and loose. Grip onto the saw, finger to the front like this, pointing. Basically, same idea I tell my other classes. If you're throwing a baseball, if you're hitting a volleyball, wherever your hand finishes is where you point it. Okay, so point forward and we hook this around the side. I'm not a lefty, but let's see what we can do. Okay, I'm gonna go to the top here. I'm gonna take my knuckle, put it down a piece of wood. I'm actually gonna flip hands to show you this part because people think I'm nuts, but that's okay. 
I put my knuckle down like that. I put the saw in the place I want to cut. I put my knuckle up against the blade of the saw, the steel. I don't put it underneath. I don't want to chop my finger off. But I put it to the side and I'm going to pull back and I'm going to create a kerf. So I'm going to pull back like this. And what my knuckle does is it holds my saw blade in place, allowing me to create that line. That line is now my starting point for my cut. Okay? What the kerf looks like, I'll zoom into it for a little bit for you. Okay? Let's see if you can see the kerf on there. It's a little tiny mark on there. You can see that. That's the cut we're starting with. Okay? So, I'm going to go lefty so you can see. I put my knuckle on, I started it. I put my saw here. Now, my saw only cuts in the four stroke position. Okay, it only cuts whichever teeth, where the teeth are facing. So, when I cut forward, it's cutting wood. When I pull back, it's clearing chips. Okay, so my protective equipment for this one safety glasses are on. I put that down, get a good base. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a bit so you can see the motion of it. And back the camera up a little bit. Okay, so I'm here to the side. My arm is there. It's loose. I'll let the saw do the cutting. So I pull back and I go forward. If I just do this all day long, it's going to take me all day long. So I'm going to give it a little bit of pressure. Okay. Notice how I hinge at my elbow. I'm not going like this to the side. I'm not going this way. I want to go straight back and straight forth. Straight back and forward. Here we go. And I'm using the entire blade of the saw. Once I get to the end, I don't want to break it off. I want to just cut nice and even. And I get a nice clean cut near the end. This piece is going to break off anyway because this is a nice scrap head in the bin. Okay? There is your measurement, marking, and hand cutting.